Southwest airline flight cancellations affecting people at San Antonio International Airport today. Just ahead, what flyers have to say about the major inconvenience. Plus, the latest when it comes to a new medication that can potentially fight COVID-19. What clinical data suggests as hospitals see a drop in caseloads. Some tropical moisture from the Pacific could mean some heavy rain by midweek. We're breaking down that forecast. Coming up. Live from Case at 12, the news at noon starts right now. First at noon, San Antonio police say they are at square one when it comes to solving a morning murder. The victim was driving a pickup truck when he was shot and killed. And as that was happening, his truck then crashed into a fence outside of a home in the 1600 block of Hermine Boulevard. As Katrina Weber reports, the search continues for clues about his killer. The sound of gunshots is what first got neighbors along Hermine Boulevard up and worried around seven this morning. By the time San Antonio police arrived, they found a bit of a different scene. There was another call where this vehicle crashed into the fence over here. Officers quickly found that inside that crash pickup, there was an even bigger concern. A man who needed medical help. They arrived at this location, found a 51-year-old man shot once um, to the side. That man, the driver of the truck, was taken to a hospital but later died of his wounds. No one in the house was hurt. Detectives quickly were on the case, now considered a homicide. They spread out throughout the neighborhood, knocking on doors and looking for clues. Among other things, police are still trying to find the shooting scene. Although neighbors heard shots fired in this area, police say they're not exactly sure where this happened. This is the beginning of the investigation and we don't have all the details as, as of right now. At the very least, they hope they'll find surveillance video to help shed light on what happened and who caused the death of that driver. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Also due at noon, San Antonio police and crime stoppers need your help finding the person who killed 29 year old Shaniqua Brown. Police say Brown was murdered July of last year at the Starcrest Apartments on Northeast Loop 410. That's near Harry Wurzbach around 2.40 in the morning. Officers say she and her husband were sitting in their car when a dark colored vehicle drove up and then someone got out of the car and shot Shaniqua. If you recognize this vehicle or have any information that may lead to an arrest, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. You could be eligible for a reward of up to $5,000. Also this afternoon, Governor Greg Abbott announced the special runoff election for the House of Representatives 118th District seat. It'll be on Tuesday, November 2nd. Early voting begins next Monday, October 18th. This was the seat recently vacated by Representative Leo Pacheco. Southwest Airlines flyers in a world of pain yesterday. The airline canceling more than 2,000 flights over the weekend, and that had a chain reaction of backups at airports all over the country. This morning again, more than 300 were canceled nationwide, and in San Antonio at last check, seven flights have been canceled so far. Sarah Costa at San Antonio International, where frustrated flyers were easy to find. We were freaking out. Krista Russo has been coordinating her 14-year-old stepdaughter's flight back home. She says the mass cancellations and delays across Southwest Airlines this weekend has been frustrating, especially for her stepdaughter, who was flying without an adult. We've done drug a two-year-old out of bed at 3 o'clock in the morning trying to catch another flight. She isn't alone. This weekend, Southwest Airlines canceled more than 2,000 flights across the country, citing air traffic control issues and weather for its weekend operational challenges. However, Southwest was the only airline to report issues on that scale. As of today, the San Antonio International Airport has only seen a handful of arriving and departing flights canceled. But earlier this weekend, the lines around the airline check-in counter were much longer and some customers have been waiting to get their flights rescheduled for more than two days. These group of men flew in from Monterrey three days ago and they've been stuck here at the airport. They said after Southwest canceled their flight, they're hoping to finally get their flight to Washington this afternoon. This couple from Wisconsin says they are flying back home and got to the airport hours early just in case they had to make last minute changes after her daughter was forced to drive from North Carolina to Wisconsin due to canceled flights. They needed to get home so they took their rental car and drove 14 hours home. So we're a little worried but we're okay we hope. <laughs> Her husband, Chuck, staying positive about the situation, offering this perspective. Think about what our grandparents went through. This is like nothing, okay? So everybody needs to take a chill pill, enjoy themselves, 
because we're all rushing to the grave. Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Meanwhile, airports across the country facing the same issue from New York to Denver to Phoenix. Lengthy lines of passengers waiting to rebook flights. Southwest blamed the chaos on bad weather in Florida, compounded by air traffic control issues. But the FAA says no air traffic shortages have been reported since Friday. Now Southwest says it's because they are still recovering from summer staffing shortages. Now to the latest involving the pandemic, the country making some progress against the virus that has rearranged our lives for almost two years now. There's word of a new medication and a drop in the caseload. ABC's Aaron Katursky with the latest. The country is nearing a milestone in the pandemic fight. Today, Merck asking federal regulators to authorize the first antiviral pill to treat COVID-19. This is the first uh, oral antiviral that will be available to combat uh, COVID-19. Clinical data suggests that for a person testing positive, four pills taken at home every 12 hours for five days can reduce the risk of hospitalization or death by 50 percent. It's no replacement for the vaccines. And this week, the FDA's science advisors will discuss booster shots for Moderna and Johnson & Johnson recipients. The seven-day average of daily new coronavirus cases has dipped below 100,000 for the first time in almost three months. Hospitalizations and deaths are also down. But doctors are seeing an increase in the pediatric inflammatory disease associated with COVID-19. We know that the Delta variant has really impacted kids um, more than previous waves have done. And so it's not really that big of a surprise. A couple weeks after your first cases of COVID start rolling in, then you start seeing your Miss C cases roll in. It's another reason why public health officials say parents should vaccinate their children. Federal regulators could authorize Pfizer shot for 5 to 11-year-olds by the end of the month. Aaron Katursky, ABC News, New York. And speaking of COVID-19, if you still need to get your vaccine, there are several pop-up clinics around town. Two that are happening tomorrow are at the Believers in Christ Ministry on North New Braunfels from 10 a.m. until 1130 in the morning. And at Health Murphy on Live Oak Street from 1 till 4 p.m., the Pfizer vaccine will be given at both locations. We have a new security team on the job at San Antonio International. Sally the canine and her handler, the first ever TSA explosive detection canine team assigned to the airport. Alicia Barreto shows us how this duo has given us an added layer of security you can expect at the airport now. Although the National TSA K-9 Training Center is housed in San Antonio at JBSA Lackland, the San Antonio Airport hadn't had a K-9 team assigned specifically to them until recently. Travelers may have noticed a K-9 and handler making their rounds throughout the airport. But first, Daryl Hagen makes a daily trip to a coffee shop for Sally's Pup Cup. Sally's job requires a high level of concentration and physical activity in order to provide peace of mind to passengers and employees at the San Antonio International Airport. According to TSA, the main role of canines like Sally is to help prevent any kind of terrorist attack by detecting bombs, bomb making equipment, or any type of explosive devices on airplanes or any mass transportation site in general. We spend 24 hours a day together. She lives at the house. She's part of the family. She gets along with both of our pets that we have at the house. She goes to work. She loves to come to work. She will screen passengers and what we call the vapor wake. As the passengers pass us, she searches behind them. They will leave a vapor trail for her to go into and find the, uh, the odors that she's trained on. Currently, no explosives have been detected as Sally and Hagen have 30 days to get used to their new environment and will later undergo an assessment for certification. TSA says Sally will soon have more canines joining her at the airport to train and get certified to protect our airports. Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. It was a huge day for the Cowboys offense against the Giants yesterday. Highlights coming up in sports. Plus space travel from Texas. Details on when the Blue Origin New Shepard launch is expected to happen and what it means to the Van Horn community. This is a pretty exciting time for space travel, especially here in Texas, where we're going to have to wait at least an extra day. The Blue Origin New Shepard launch NS-18 has been delayed to at least Wednesday morning due to the weather. 
And there's a lot going on on that ship. We know that 90-year-old William Shatner, who many of us know as Captain Kirk from Star Trek, set to be on that rocket. But as Max Massey shows us, this launch in the Blue Origin program has also meant so much to the Van Horn community in Texas. Guys like you and me, they just have to be the top rocket scientists in the United States. Superintendent Kenneth Ball tells me Blue Origin has been a great community partner with his school district. Uh, they took us up at, on platforms so we could look down in the capsules uh, with those big windows in it and could see inside the capsules realizing, oh, wow, they're walking around seeing these people work and they're, they're, they can see themselves. The tours, the mentorships, and just the idea of space travel happening in your community, it is inspiring so many local Van Horn students. Uh, we also did a, a program design that they came out and worked with our teams of kids. And they worked with, uh, they went in, we even started down in fourth grade, and, but we really uh, were heavy in junior high. It's an amazing collaboration between Blue Origin and the education system, but also with the community. There are plans and ideas that are literally out of this world. You can fill out a card, postcard, and you self-address it. You get it out. You get it to them. This thing go. There's you know requirements of something you'll put on that postcard, but it goes to space. They put it in one of their launches. It goes to space. It lands. They come down and certify it and mail it back. And so you've received a postcard from space. This has been years in the making, and it really is just the start. We've written several grants. They are, you in these grants, they always require industry partners. They are industry partners on so many grants with us, I've lost count. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. That is pretty cool that that little tiny town gets all that help. All the attention, too. Yeah. That's awesome. Speaking of attention, we better be paying attention over the next few days, apparently. There's a lot going on this week. Hey, last night was pretty busy, mind you. We had some showers and storms come through, some pretty good rain. We've got more on the way by midweek as some tropical moisture heads our way. Aquifer is down three tenths per foot, 658.9. And looking at the pollen count, molds are high. They jumped up. Looks like after last night's rain, everything else is low. Where and when can you expect that rain? We're going to break it all down. Coming up. Love, love, love getting some rain last night all over our area. Everybody was happy about that. It has gotten dry. I had no idea. <laughs> Sorry about that. Right I had no idea. It was loud, depending on where you live. Now, the north side of Bear County kind of got the, the, the biggest uh, rainfall totals, the, the highest numbers, especially around the airport. Uh, if you go down in the southern parts of Bear County, wasn't as much rain. But look, we have some more chances on the way. This week uh, has potential to be fairly busy. Let's look at where the rainfall totals were last night and some of those bigger numbers. As I mentioned, the airport, 1.1 inches. Out in Bandera County, about an inch. Comfort, same story. Just go out towards Selma, 0.61. New Braunfels, about three tenths. And you look at Stinson, 0 0.08. You go south of that, there was no rain. Those storms moved right across, across Kendall County, Northern Bear County, into Comal County. And again, it was loud last night with some of those storms. That was along a frontal boundary. That front did move through, and it has uh, pushed all the way to the coast now pretty impressively. Behind it, we still do have some clouds, although there's a sharp line. You go north to San Antonio, it's sunny. San Antonio, south and east, we have uh, partly cloudy skies. There's the front right there it's starting to pull up stationary, but it is just south of Corpus Christi. It'll kind of fall apart or actually move back to the north as a warm front. And so it's going to be one day for us where we get some of this drier air and, and nice weather, at least until we get into the weekend. Then we get some big changes and I'll show you that here in a second. Blue skies as we look out over the airport, 74 degrees. Dew point is at 54. That feels great. Northeast Julie winds at 10 miles per hour. In the 79 right now, Castroville, 75 in Divine. Still some low 70s for Canyon Lake, New Braunfels. Kind of feels like fall out there today. South uh, where that front is located, it is a little bit warmer. 86 right now in Corpus Christi, 84 in Katua. And two points have dropped off nicely into the mid 50s and even 40s out west. But that changes very quickly overnight. We get the dew points that are comfortable today, but by tomorrow morning, we're seeing dew points jump up into the 70s. Look at those numbers. It's going to be really muggy by tomorrow, and that's going to lead to some showers and storms, I think. Here is the uh, last front that moved through that storm system. It's quickly moving away. 
And we've got to turn our attention now to the Pacific. Normally, when we're talking about tropical systems affecting Texas, we're looking at the Atlantic or the Gulf of Mexico. Not in this case. This is Tropical Storm Pamela. Winds are at 65 miles per hour, gusting to 75. And the track on this system takes it towards the west coast of Mexico as a major hurricane. Winds at 120 miles per hour. And look at this. Holds together as a tropical storm, and then maybe a tropical depression, all the way into Texas. It's going to drag a lot of moisture in our direction and interact with a frontal boundary, and that could bring us some good rain. We're looking at Wednesday into Thursday for that happening. So this is tomorrow morning. We've got a warm front, showers, a um, couple of storms developing. It's humid tomorrow. As we get into Wednesday morning, showers and storms developing along that front. As I mentioned, could see some heavier rain. And then here, here comes some of that tropical moisture, bringing even heavier rain by late Wednesday night into Thursday morning before that shifts east late in the day on Thursday. Rainfall potential, we could see up to six inches in the hill country. So this is the area we're going to watch. But San Antonio still could see some very good healthy rainfall totals out of this. And these numbers could move a little bit, so we need to watch it closely. Here's how rain chances play out, I think. 60% chance Wednesday night into Thursday. That will be that main window. And then some rain chances still even as we get into Friday as a front comes through. The numbers, 90 Tuesday, 89 Wednesday, 84 Thursday, 87 on Friday, a few showers with a frontal boundary. And then look at the weekend. 70s for highs, lows potentially in the 40s around here. Whoa, seriously? Yes, indeed. Wow, thank you. Yep. Hey, the Cowboys are on a roll with a big win over their east rival, the Giants, yesterday. Got highlights that another record-setting day for the UTSA Roadrunners. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. It was against the Giants a year ago, 364 days to be exact, when Dak Prescott's season ended against the New York team. Significant because he thinks about it, but yesterday it was all about their NFC East rivals with former Cowboys coach and player Jason Garrett still calling the offensive shots for the Giants. Cowboys had two turnovers in the first, got away with them, second quarter, 3 0, deep to CD land. That was on the money, 49 yard touchdown. Cowboys lead 10 0. Giants starters dropping like flies. They lose Sequan Bartley, then quarterback. Daniel Jones lowered his head and ends up with a concussion. You see him staggering right there. He had to be charted off the field. Fourth and goal, the Giants' Devontae Booker scores. We're tied at 10. Less than 40 seconds to play. Deck fires to Amari Cooper. This is the way you go into the locker room. 24-yard touchdown, up 17-10. Third quarter, Deck over the wide open. Zeke, how do you like that little trickery? And I don't know what that was. Deion Sanders' move right there. It's 27-13, fourth quarter. Elliott and Don. This one on the ground. 13 yards out, 34-13. Elliott finished with 110 yards, two touchdowns. Midway through the quarter, though, tippers flare. Giants receive, receiver Kadarius Toney throws a punch at DeMonte Kazi after he was shoved. Toney was ejected, and this game was over by then. Here's your final. New York, 20. Dallas, 44. By the way, the offense for the Cowboys, over 500 yards total. All right, so next week, the Cowboys travel to New England to take on the Patriots 325 Gillette Stadium. After opening the season with a win, the Texans have been struggling, so they are just trying to turn things around, and it's not easy. How about a long 10-minute drive to open things up with? That's 11-yard touchdown from Davis Mills to Anthony Eclair, but the extra point, no good. 6-0 Texans. Second quarter, tied at 6. Mills connects with Chris Moore, and he takes off for the 67-yard touchdown. Not going to get him. Extra point again. It's 12-6, Texans and lead 59 at the half. Houston went up 13 in the third. New England scored 16 straight, 13-yard touchdown to Hunter Henry. 21-yard field goal from Nick Foles, seals the deal. It's the Pats' largest comeback in four years. Once again, here is that final New England over the Texans, 25-22. Despite the loss, Texans seems to continue to urge everyone. It's all a work in progress, so that work in progress will continue next week when the Texans travel to Indianapolis to take on the Colts Sunday at noon, Lucas Oil Stadium. Seems like every week, another chapter in the history books for UTSA. They just keep adding to it. Best start in history category now, 6-0 six six oh after their 52-46 victory over Western Kentucky. And how about another record? Quarterback Frank Harris threw a school record six Touchdowns. He had 347 yards passing. Also caught a TD pass for a total of seven touchdowns for him on the night. 
Clarence Hicks sealed the victory with an interception in the final minute of the game. That preserved their 52-46 victory over the Hilltoppers. So this Saturday, it is a showdown with Rice in the Alamo Dome here at home, 5 p.m., and it is homecoming, so get fired up for UTSA. And last night, second to last preseason game for the Spurs in Orlando, taking on the Magic. These two will open the season here in San Antonio on the 23rd quarter. Dejounte Murray baseline game high 18 for him. Spurs led 81 64 after three rookie Joshua Primo had a three he had nine points, but the game was tied at 98 all with two minutes to play and got a Bates Diop nails a game winning three 102 left to play. San Antonio wins at 101 100. The Spurs will wrap up the preseason Friday. When they host the Houston Rockets at 730, then as we said, next week they open up the regular season on the 20th against the Magic. How'd your team do? Which team are you talking about? This Cowboys, they won. Oh, you're talking about, well, see, yeah. wore some red and black for me today. And, and I honor. did. It was bad. It was bad? It was bad. Bad as LSU? About as bad as LSU, maybe worse. All right, we're moving on. Still <laughs> ahead in the next half hour, how a third COVID-19 vaccine shot is helping organ transplant recipients. And the latest when it comes to those delayed Southwest flights across the country. We told you a little bit about it in our first half hour, that weekend travel headache for thousands of Southwest airline passengers. And it's just extended into a new week after a day of canceling more than a thousand flights. Day the airline has already canceled hundreds more passengers stranded trying to find a way to their destination. ABC's Faith of Bube has the latest on the chaos. Thousands of frustrated Southwest Airlines passengers scrambling to salvage their travel plans as the airline continues to cancel hundreds of flights. We were originally from going from Denver to Orlando, and now we are going Denver to Tampa. Video showing the stranded travelers in long lines at airports across the country after Southwest abruptly canceled more than 1,800 flights over the weekend. When you're at the gate just being dropped completely uh, and left to fend for yourself, definitely not a good feeling. Monday morning, flight tracking website FlightAware showing the carrier canceling an additional 300 plus departures. That's more than eight times as many cancellations as its closest U.S. competitor, American Airlines, which only canceled 41 flights as of late morning. We stood in line for about two hours and then it took us another hour just to find a hotel just because they were all booked. Southwest apologizing for the chaos, blaming a host of issues, including bad weather and air traffic control problems. But the FAA tells ABC News, quote, no FAA air traffic shortages have been reported since Friday. And as some airlines continue to experience scheduling challenges due to aircraft and crews being out of place. Just days ago, Southwest pilots sued the carrier for its COVID vaccine mandate, but the pilots union is adamant the cancellations have nothing to do with any pilot protest, but rather poor planning by Southwest management. Meanwhile, as the travel troubles continue, Fabricia Amara's 14 year old daughter's canceled flight now means she won't make it in time for her neurosurgeon appointment. This is a neurosurgeon that I just opened and told me you got to be here because otherwise just next year. In addition to the cancellation, Southwest is also experiencing widespread delays. As of this morning, FlightAware is showing more than 500 delayed Southwest flights. In Washington, Faith Abube, ABC News. And again, in San Antonio, we're having that same issue, so you might want to check if you're flying Southwest. There have been six cancellations so far. The Southern California beach that has been closed since crude oil leaked into the ocean now reopening today. City and state officials say the water quality tests in Huntington Beach revealing no detectable levels of oil associated with toxins in the water. The spill of about 25,000 gallons of crude has kept the ocean off limits for a week to surfers, swimmers and people who walk the beach as well. An earthquake with a preliminary magnitude of 6.5 struck the coast of Alaska this morning. According to the U.S. Geological Survey, the epicenter was about 71 miles east of the village of Shignook. The depth was reported about 28 miles. The U.S. Tsunami Warning Center says there is no tsunami threat, though. A nuclear engineer with the U.S. Navy accused of trying to sell secrets about Navy submarines to a foreign national. He's now under arrest along with his wife. According to the FBI, Jonathan Toby, who has top security clearance, sent a package of documents to an undisclosed foreign government in April last year. It reportedly included a quote, 
sample of restricted data and instructions on establishing a covert relationship, unquote. The court documents do not explain how the FBI received the package, but undercover agents posing as spies allegedly made a deal with Toby to share the secret information in exchange for $100,000. Toby's wife is also facing charges for allegedly serving as his lookout. The Taliban says the U.S. has agreed to provide humanitarian aid to Afghanistan on the brink of an economic disaster, all while refusing to give the political recognition to the country's new rulers. ABC's Julia McFarland is in London with more. The United States was keen to emphasize that this first round of talks was not about formal recognition of the Taliban government, but about the dire security and humanitarian situation in the country, which is spiraling into a crisis. As foreign nationals left, so too did international aid that made up 75 percent of Afghan public spending. Now, following talks in Doha, Qatar, the United States has agreed to provide desperately needed humanitarian aid to the country, but insisted it would not be linked to endorsement of the Taliban. Meanwhile, the Taliban want the U.S. to lift sanctions on the Afghan Central Bank and on the topic of security said there would be no cooperation in the fight against ISIS. That threat growing ever stronger now that Western forces have all but vanished on the ground. A huge suicide bombing at a Shia mosque in Kunduz last week killed at least 60 people. Scores were wounded. ISIS in Afghanistan claiming they were behind the attack. The terrorist group is a sworn enemy of the Taliban and are seen as the biggest threat to U.S. interests in the country. Now, while vast differences remain, after this initial round of dialogue, the U.S. characterized the talks as candid and professional, reiterating that the Taliban would be judged on their actions, not just their words. Julia McFarlane, ABC News, London. London's Metropolitan Police done reviewing sexual assault claims against Prince Andrew. The pro police reportedly found the claims against the British prince were not sufficient enough to warrant further investigation. Prince Andrew has been accused of sexually abusing girls trafficked by Jeffrey Epstein. Epstein's accuser, Virginia Goofrey, is suing on Andrew in the U.S. saying that he abused her. Andrew denies any wrongdoing before completing their investigation. Police say they reviewed Guffrey's lawsuit claiming Epstein and his partner, Delane Maxwell, abused more than a half dozen young girls and women in the U.S. Outside with live cam, and that may be where you want to go is outside. Enjoy the beautiful afternoon. Had the rain last night. More coming. So this may be our shot at uh, enjoying some nice weather. This is going to be one of our nicest days, probably until we get into the weekend, David. The blue skies out there right now. Front moved through last night. It feels really nice. Temperatures are in the mid 70s right now. A little bit of a northeasterly wind, some drier air. Enjoy it while it lasts because by tonight that humidity is surging back in here and things change pretty rapidly starting tomorrow. 72 Bernie stage 72 in Bolverde. We're at 74 at the airport. Just a few clouds. The clouds do increase a little bit as you go south and east. Sunny in Uvalde, 80 degrees there, 80 down in Pleasanton with partly cloudy skies for you. Here's a look across the country and there's still quite a bit of warmth stretching from Chicago down towards Texas. It's been very warm. In fact, out west, though, a little cooler and some of those cooler temperatures, some of that cooler air will eventually work, work its way down into Texas. Obviously, we won't be in the 30s and 40s, but we will feel some cooler air by the weekend. It will take until then to get some of that uh, cooler air in here. Lower humidity today, as we mentioned, humidity comes back tomorrow. Could see a few showers, maybe a thunderstorm. And then by Wednesday and Thursday, that's where it gets a little interesting because we will be looking at some tropical moisture coming in from the Pacific. And that could spell some heavy rain for some of us. Forecast for today up around 86, mostly sunny skies and northeasterly winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. Guys. Thank you, Justin. Researchers say an extra shot of the COVID-19 vaccine can go a long way to protect organ transplant recipients. With more, here's ABC's Elizabeth Schulze. Researchers say organ transplant patients may be more vulnerable to COVID breakthrough infections despite vaccinations. New research by Johns Hopkins Hospital shows an extra dose of a COVID vaccine could help those who had previously received two doses of an mRNA shot. After just two doses of a COVID vaccine, 80% of these patients did not develop an antibody response to COVID. A third dose of a COVID vaccine increased the antibody presence in one third of patients who previously had no response and in all patients who had a weak response. 
The Johnson & Johnson, Pfizer and Moderna vaccines were tested with acceptable reactions. With this Medical Minute, I'm Elizabeth Schulze. Still ahead, a message from the creators of the popular Netflix show Squid Games. Why they say you should not call the number you see on the show. Plus a new limited series that looks at how and why a widely praised prescription drug became part of the opioid epidemic. And three U.S.-based economists win the Nobel Peace Prize. Details on what they did to earn the award. Coming up. This is your daily tech and business briefing from Cheddar News. Southwest now becoming the latest airline to deal with a large number of flight cancellations. More than 1,800 flights were canceled over the weekend due to air traffic control issues, bad weather, and staffing issues. The airline has long been struggling to fill positions recently and even trimmed its schedule after the summer to avoid flight disruptions. And Kraft Heinz CEO says everyone needs to get used to higher food prices. Miguel Patricio told the BBC inflation was hitting across the board as the rising cost of ingredients have pushed global food prices to a 10-year high. That has led Kraft Heinz to raise prices on half of its products in the U.S. and the rest of the world. And Tesla threw a massive party to announce its Germany Gigafactory will start producing vehicles soon. The goal of delivering them in December. Musk hopes to produce between 5,000 and 10,000 cars a week to start things off. Gigafactory is expected to manufacture Model Y cars to go along with millions of battery cells. Tesla is still waiting for the final approval for the factory as local authorities are evaluating potential environmental concerns. And that's your Cheddar News and Tech Update. I'm Ken Bufa from Cheddar Studios in Lower Manhattan. Also in your consumer news this noon, three U.S.-based economists won the Nobel Prize for Economics. The winners, winners David Carr, Joshua Inquist, and Guido Imbens, won the award for pioneering research that showed an increase in minimum wage doesn't lead to less hiring, and immigrants don't lower pay for native-born workers. In addition, they created a way to study these types of social issues. Uh, first for Netflix, it's teamed up with Walmart. It's developing a digital storefront. It's the first time the streaming service has done that with a national retailer. The Netflix section of the Walmart website now stocked with products connected to Netflix shows like Stranger Things and Squid Game, which you should not call the number on your screen. Apparently as we just reported. Somebody overseas, right? Yeah. A number? You, you'll, get, you'll end up with a long distance charge, apparently, of some sort. <laughs> and bothering some lady in a yeah. foreign country. Yeah, I think she's changed her number by now. Uh, that, that, I haven't seen that show, but I've heard good things. I'll have to check it out. Uh, 74 degrees so far today. Man, that's a fantastic number. 60 was the low this morning. Averages are 84 and 62. We'll be actually pretty close to average today. Records are 97 and 43. 97 we set just last year. There are some changes this week, some heavy rain potentially by midweek. We're going to look at that forecast again coming up. Hillary Clinton, now a novelist on top of her already extensive resume. Her new book, State of Terror, comes out this week. It's a thriller. It's co-written by Clinton and her friend Louise Penny, the best-selling crime novelist. The book is about a new secretary of state that gets caught up in what Clinton calls one of her nightmare scenarios while in Washington, an international terrorist plot involving nuclear weapons. We were talking about this just a second ago, so here you go with some details. If you're binging the popular Netflix series Squid Game, the video streaming platform has a message for you. Don't call the eight-digit phone number you see in the episodes. Netflix says it will re-edit the scenes of the series to remove the phone number because... It reportedly belongs to a South Korean woman who has received thousands of calls and messages from fans asking to take part in Squid Game. She reportedly had the number for 10 years and counting. So I guess the premise of Squid Games is it's a bunch of Korean childhood games that adults are playing to get money. And these people are all in desperate financial situations. So there's a lot of emotion involved in Doing, doing. I, I haven't seen it. I, all I, I just feel sorry for this. Woman I have not watched it. Calls. Our producers watched it. She said it's good if it's, you don't like gory stuff. Huh. If you do like gory, if you stuff. do. Oh, it's oh. it is gory. Okay, there oh. you go. She said people get killed yeah. in it. Oh, but I think it's fictional, right? Like, uh, yeah. it's like a, it sounds like the Hunger Games. It's it is. Yeah, it, okay. It's exactly what they're they're trying to do. Like I said, I just feel sorry for the woman who's getting all the calls. She's getting a lot, probably. 
Uh, yeah, uh, a lot of people are watching that right now. It seems very, very popular. Also popular, the idea that we could get a little more rain this week. I know we got some last night, and there are more chances down the line here as we get into the middle part of the week with some tropical moisture. First, though, let's show you what's going on outside. We've got clouds trying to shift out of here. A little band of clouds right across San Antonio, but no big deal. It feels very, very nice out there. And then you get down towards uh, the coast, there are, there are more clouds. And there is the frontal boundary right there. It has moved through Corpus Christi, but it's starting to stall. It has pushed through most, most of our area, which again is a good thing because you get scenes like this. Blue skies and temperatures in the mid-70s, 75 Kelly, 73 Randolph. It is a little warmer at Stinson. Stinson's been running a little warm as of late. Northeast Julie winds anywhere from 5 to 10 miles per hour. 81 Castroville, 72 Bernie State, 77 in Comfort, 76 in Kerrville. Kerrville was in the 50s earlier this morning. And then you'll find some 80s down to the south. Our normal warm spots, Carrizo Springs, Catula, checking in in the mid 80s. Two points have fallen off pretty significantly into the mid 50s. So we're in the pleasant category right now. There are some dew points in the 60s and 70s, a little closer to that front. Now by tonight, all this moisture is going to spread back north and we'll see those dew points jump right back into the 60s and 70s by tomorrow morning. So this dry air is short lived. It's not going to be around very long behind this frontal boundary. And you can see it's taking a lot of the rain with it too as this system quickly moves away. Now down to our south and west. I know we've been talking about this for several days, but here is the latest on tropical storm Pamela. And this is going to have a significant impact on our forecast. Winds right now are at 70 miles per hour. This is almost almost a hurricane and it will become a hurricane as it moves north and then eventually northeast the, affecting the west coast of mexico as a, as a potentially major hurricane then it spreads north northeast into texas potentially still holding on as a tropical depression by the time it makes it here that's a little unique we do see tropical moisture coming in from the pacific quite often but Rarely do we see a system actually hold together all the way into Texas. If we're trop talking tropical weather, usually it's from the Gulf of Mexico and, and the Atlantic, but not in this case. And this moisture is going to interact with a frontal boundary, and that's going to give us some good rain in spots. Tomorrow, that warm front lifts north. We see some isolated showers and storms, about a 30% chance of rain tomorrow. By the time we get into Wednesday morning, that front's starting to move into central Texas, and it's right along that front where I think we're going to get some heavy rain in parts of the hill country, Edwards Plateau. As that tropical moisture arrives, then the uh, heavier rain spreads across the area, still, I think, focused across the hill country, and then we'll see that rain in west to east as we get into Thursday and Thursday afternoon. As far as rainfall goes, potentially up to six inches in parts of the hill country, and then we'll still see some decent rain even here in San Antonio, uh, depending on where that tropical moisture sets up. We'll keep you posted. We'll be here for you, and uh, stay tuned to that KSAT weather app. We'll send updates via the app as well. 30% chance of rain tomorrow, 90, 89 Wednesday, 84 Thursday, with heavy rain possible. Front comes through on Friday, a few showers with that clears out by the weekend. We get some great weather. 70s, upper 70s Saturday and Sunday with the lows in the 40s and 50s. We'll be right back. We're going to look at something that could be big. Oxycontin. Purdue Pharma, they've been marketing the drug as something that's not addictive when it clearly is. Dope Sick looks at the lives touched and destroyed by the drug Oxycontin. Addiction rates, overdoses, and crime on the rise across the country because of this drug. Michael Keaton stars as a small town doctor who gives his patients what he's told is a non-addictive painkiller. These people, my people, trusted me. I can't believe how many of them are good now. I've always been a newspaper reader, a news watcher, et cetera, et cetera. So you think you understand these things and then you realize, man, I don't know anything about you know, the more I dived into it, the extent of the lying, the deception, the manipulation of Purdue Pharma and how it never ended. This is not our fault. These people want to be addicted. They spent years putting it together. A lot of the obstacles that they faced were within the government itself. Purdue Pharma would train its reps to kind of circumvent any pushback the, the doctors would have. Your most effective talking point are these magic words. Less than 1%. Less than 1%. Less than 1%. Less than 1%. They told me that less than 1% would become addicted. 
desire to uh, make as much money as possible led to the decimation of communities and uh, hardworking Americans being taken advantage of, hardworking Americans who were in need of pain relief. Purdue continues to lie about the drug safety to doctors, to patients, and the FDA. Turns out uh, Purdue Pharma did it on purpose. They knew from the beginning. They hoodwinked the FDA. The FDA failed. And now, you know, your 16-year-old son who was injured playing football is addicted to Oxycontin. It could soon become Purdue's first billion-dollar drug. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. So many things to do, so many places to see this Halloween season. And SA Live is going to help us out with a sneak peek at some of them today. Hi, Mike and Fiona. Oh, it is going to be a fantastic Monday, and we've got all sorts, a little bit of everything going on today. <laughs> oh, yes, including studying with some of your favorites, snakes Love from it. Animal World and Snake Farm Zoo. But besides that, they've got a lemur and two other animals, so there'll be something for you to hold. Something fuzzy, <laughs> not scary. Okay. Yes. Hey, International Day of Girl Child with author Bonnie Garcia, and this is part of our tribute to Hispanic Heritage Month. All right, and of course, our Halloween DIY week was last last week, but we are revisiting some of those ideas, including your very own bubbling witch's cauldron with burning embers. We are going to show you how to DIY the whole thing. Fiona is now the new <laughs> creative person on here, along with Stephanie Pena Frost. She's going to be here and uh, great tips on how to make your decorations last. And of course, you know him as Ice from Hocus Pocus. So fans rejoice. Larry Bagby is here and we chat with him and also get a musical performance. And back to Halloween, of course, it's always fun with all those the spooky events going on around here. You know, we've got all the haunted houses and everything, and one great place to go is out there to SeaWorld. You went out, and did you get frightened? Yes, you're gonna check it because they've got the spooktacular during the day, and of course, the stuff for the adults at uh, night. All that and more when SA Live continues in just 